Hello my people. Ruro's decision to dismiss his entire cabinet came after a reflection. Listening keenly to what the people of Kenya have said. The crisis led to sharp cuts in government spending and a downgrade of Kenya's debt rating. This move was aimed at defusing tensions and address public anger over proposed tax hikes. Whether it was sufficient remains a matter of ongoing debate and assessment. Please take a listen. All right, let's go ahead and bring in our guests. They're all joining us from Nairobi. Silvana Sosoro is a member of the Kenyan parliament representing the governing party. He voted in favor of that finance bill. Juanjiro Gekonio is a researcher on good governance and accountability. She's also the former coordinator for a civil society campaign that highlighted the impact of public debt on the economy. And finally, Keritu Chega is an activist and member of the Communist Party of Kenya. He took part in some of last month's protests. A warm welcome to you all, and thanks so much for joining us today on Inside Story. Kedetu, let me start with you today. Is sacking most of the cabinet, as President Ruto has done, the answer to Kenya's problems right now? Uh, you protested. You were out in the streets with other protesters and other activists. Does this action by the president say to you that he is listening to the demands of the protesters? No, no, it does not. Let me actually address how Ruto has decided to go about this. He said that he's going to build a cabinet that's based on a broad coalition. What he's actually talked about is the fact that he's going to bring in the opposition leader, Ray Odinga, and the Asimio coalition. It's probable, that the, it's probable that he's going to form the next cabinet on the basis of a coalition with those people. That means that we're going to go back to a situation that we had a while back in Kenya, the similar to a situation that we had a while back in Kenya called Nusukate, and that did not work out well Kenyans back in two that that is back in 2008. Um, I do not think it is enough. I think it has been made very clear by the protesters what we want to do. The current hashtag, and for everyone who is listening, is hashtag brutal must go. We have, had, we have currently on the panel an MP currently voted yes. I would just like to tell you, shame on you. Right? I would just like to say that the finance bill is not something that like a dropping in something is something that we can say that you dropping it is, is is showing that you listen. Because in several interviews that he has done, he has made it very clear that he dropped it unwillingly and that he is proud of the bill that he's passed. He has actually said that the MPs who voted yes for that bill should be very proud of themselves. They did a great service to the station. And on top of that, he passed the Appropriations Act. Now, the Appropriations Act is attached to, to the finance bill. The finance bill actually dictates where the money is coming from. The Appropriations Act is now saying the money that has been collected, how it's going to be distributed. Now, he didn't pass the Finance Act bill, into, he didn't pass it into law, but he passed the Appropriations Bill and made it into law. So now mm. the question is, in passing the Appropriations Bill, did he listen to the people at every single point, through rhetoric, through law, and mm. through policy? He has demonstrated that he hasn't listened to the people. Who don't pass it? Silvanos, uh, you voted for that controversial finance bill that President Ruto ultimately scrapped. Do you think that he was wrong to abandon it? Certainly wrong. And not only did I vote yes, I also mobilized my colleagues as the chief whip of the National Assembly of the majority to vote yes. I mean, we must be realistic. We have a country that passed a constitution in 2010 which is humongous that we must maintain. It is the Kenyan people that passed to have 47 counties across the country that they want to pay their staff. It is the Kenyan people that set different systems of government that are autonomous, including the judiciary. It is the Kenyan people that gave the responsibility of the previous government to pass and approve the new system of education called CBC that requires an additional 66,000 teachers uh, uh, to, to, to teach their students in schools. That idea required a budget. It required extra money. The only way government makes money is through taxes. And we had to broaden, the president had to find a way to broaden the tax base. That was one of the one option. He had the option of broadening the tax base or borrowing. What my uh, colleague uh, in, in this panel uh, is uh, saying and telling me, shame on you, 
I will tell you also, it, it is also shameful for a country to be dependent on foreign aid to run their internal affairs. I mean, that is what a responsible leader ought to have done. Expand the tax base, and that is what we did. All the imports, several, I mean, on all items, several items that are imported from different countries, that is what we did. Just an additional taxes on the finished products, not locally manufactured products. And then we even gave, um, we, we gave, uh, mm. um, we also, in that red bill, there was a proposal to zero rate taxes on raw materials for those finished products so that you can mm. be able to get those companies set based in industrial area and employ our own people. So people, you know, coming on and raising issues on brutal mass go, they are constitutional ways of sending away the president and that can only happen in the ballot. All these hashtags and uh, street trials and everything will not have the president go. It will only happen when we go to the ballot. So that can it be voted yes. Even if the bill came today, I still vote yes because I know the situation the country is. We had a four trillion budget. How do you find out that budget? How do you recruit the teachers? So that is the budget. So the students are understaffed. Silvanus, so I'm going to get back to you about some of the points you're making in just a minute. Kenneth, I know you want to jump in, but I want to go to Wanjiro right now. Um, Ruto has dismissed most of the cabinet. That is the headline here. But I want to dig a little deeper. I mean, how is this being seen by the public? Is this seen as though there is actually going to be a new government in place? Or is this being seen as just the removal of a few officials? And if these officials are removed, who is now in charge of these government portfolios? Well, thank you so much, Mohammed, and uh, it's good to be here to add my voice on to this. Um, yes, Ruto has dismissed the entire cabinet, but of course, um, the lack of legitimacy of the government stems from his management of the economy and his management of the public service. He's been a very um, hands-on president uh, who's really weakened and compromised um, you know, politicians uh, such as Osoro uh, much as he's making a very uh, spirited argument, there are so many uh, gaps in the uh, narrative that he's he's sharing here today. So much as the you know, and I would say he's an outgoing president because he's lost the um, the trust and confidence of the majority of Kenyans. Much as William Ruto has uh, now. Um, uh, you know, dissolved this uh, cabinet and is planning to put up another one, you have to remember that the problem with the cabinet stems from the appointments he made. He appointed people who had cases, corruption cases, murder cases, um, rape cases in, in front of uh, the court of law. And he then used his mechanisms to have those cases withdrawn through the DPP. He then took this DPP, appointed him to a much higher position, and then appointed these people. So actually, there were the highest chances of getting into Ruto's cabinet was to have some charges before the court, uh, stealing public money, all kinds of criminal um, activity. Then the other thing is competence. Some of the people he appointed are politicians, and they could be good enough at their politics, but can they run government? So William Ruto appointed a cabinet that inspired no confidence and couldn't perform. He then proceeded to have economic policies that um, actually have been, um, he reneged on his uh, manifesto promises because it was supposed to be a bottom-up government to assist business, to assist small businesses, to put money in the pockets of Kenyans. And he's done exactly the opposite because he got in, Wanjiro, uh, he took up the IMF. Wanjiro, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but may I, may I just ask you, because you're making but, the point about economic not, policies. Not, just very quickly, I, I want to ask you, you know, there is this cost of living crisis in Kenya. The economic conditions are worsening. What is it going to take to tackle Kenya's financial woes? Um, there's been a, there's a need to cut down on wasteful spending. There's a lot of duplication in the budget. There's a lot of um, excessive spending through allowances, through administrative costs, unnecessary travel. Um, civil society organizations are president, presently combing through the budget and they are confident they can find uh, a trillion shillings, um, which is um, about uh, possibly eight, uh, eight billion uh, USD of waste. 
Another thing that happens, much as Osori is saying that we, we enacted a very expensive constitution, the national government wage bill has continued to increase as we, if they implement the con, uh, constitution. It was supposed to decrease as those functions and officers are decentralized to the local level. Mm. Uh, we then, there's, there's been overemployment, there's been a lot of waste, there's also been corruption. The mm. Auditor General find can't account for almost another 8 billion USD um, in terms of world money. So the accountability option and what the Gen Z uh, protest um, and really revolt is about, it's mm. about accountability, it's about the culture of government, it's about the kind of leaders, it's about respecting the public by listening to public uh, participation and giving us, using sound evidence, because mm. the argument that you in taxes will, to get more revenue doesn't hold water. The data of the Parliamentary Budget Office shows that the growth in taxes has actually been, mm. taxes have been decreasing because there's uh, of over taxation. Rather, there's a need to cut the expenditure and then put the expenditure, instead of funding uh, political projects that are, you know, benefiting a few, put mm. the money where it has incremental value. And that is what Parliament has completely missed and misrepresented Kenyans. Kiritu, um, I see you reacting to what Wanju uh, was saying, and also you were reacting earlier to what Sil Silanus was saying. Um, look, I want to also ask you about the fact that, you know, youth dissatisfaction with Ruto, that uh, began before these proposed tax hikes, right? I mean, what else were the protesters who came out in the streets upset about prior to, to this latest bill that was eventually withdrawn? Um, there are so many things we could talk about, but... First, let me just highlight the one um, law that is really a creature. There is the sink law or the punitive sink law that they want to pass, a, that, that they have been pushing for a panel. Basically, there is this thing called seed sharing. Seed sharing is a situation where farmers can exchange this each other things that they can now use to plant crops and stuff rather than like getting that um, generic seeds that they can buy from um they, they, they can buy from from, from government or from companies like Monsanto. so that was criminalized or is in the process of being criminalized by parliament which means then that farmers are going to be directly dependent on or, or, on, on, on government parastatals that have been that have been privatized and sold to companies like Monsanto so that they can actually get seeds to plant their crops. There are so many other uh, laws or purity measures that the government is taking on top of things like this. With this current um, financial year, we've had um, laws, for example, like the land amendment bill, like, or the land amendment law. I'm pretty sure so it's going to come in and say, oh, we in or something like that. But we do know that there are active efforts by the government to actually turn free world land in Kenya and convert it into this world land, which will essentially mean that you know, with this world land, even any foreigner can actually come in and buy land in Kenya as opposed to free world land, which is uh, exclusively accessed by Kenyan citizens. We are being pushed into another situation of colonialism. But let me just say on top of this, MP Mr. Osoro, we were told by a Congo court that you guys had to see two million shillings each as MPs to actually vote yes for this finance bill. But when Buri, a current MP and my MP of Chucha, are actually came in and confirmed this in front of the Deputy President Shigale that mm -hmm. MPs have actually right to actually um, take in this two million shillings. So we know full well that there are so many reasons why you're proud of of, of voting yes for this bill, but servicing the people is not one of them. Mm. Serving Ruto, serving masters in IMF, that is definitely a, a good reason why.